the most popular trending comic books in the world. And hold up, am I reading this right? 1,809.8s were added to the census in under a month. Are you trying to say I'm typing the notes wrong, Tom? Are you blaming me? Are you saying I'm making typos and mistakes on these notes? How dare you? Let's get into it. What's cooking, comic fam? We want to give a big shout out to our brother, Russ Bright, who's going to be away from the show for a small amount of time because he's recovering from some surgery. He is out and doing much better. I didn't even know the surgery was already happened. I, I thought he would be doing that like next week. So it's, it's good to hear that he's already done and he's okay and he's already recovering. I've been told that he's essentially turning into a Cylon, getting some work done, some upgrades. So that's why his spine is always glowing red. I've, I've been wondering that, but I haven't had the courage to ask him. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. We're here every week without skipping a beat, nearly for five years straight, talking about the most trending comic books in the marketplace, and I'm not wearing my Kiss shirt for no reason. I forgot to wear my Kiss shirt today. We're talking about Kiss. We're at number 10 on the list, Marvel Comics Super Special number one. This is the second appearance of Kiss in comic books, but there's something cooler that happened in this issue. $300 average sales, CGC 9.2 in May, sold for $750. And this was the issue. Um, a team-up of the band with Stan Lee flying in a private jet to Buffalo, New York, by the way, where I was born, to drop some vials of blood into the print so that the ink can contain the DNA of the KISS members. This is a very dark, almost, dare I say, demonic comic book. <laughs> the four of them and me are going to go and drop some blood in a printing plant. So we are seeing a 275% increase in copies sold of this book this week compared to weeks past. There are only 854 slabs on the CGC census. It's not the most prevalent comic book out there, at least in slab form. Now, the price was set for a 9.6 this year in March, where it sold for $1,000. The most recent sale being nearly $400 under tells me that there's definitely interest in owning this book, but this is definitely a collectible that goes to KISS fans. There's only 48 copies graded at a 9.8, and we haven't seen one of those sell since 2021 December, and that hit $2,500. Now, why the increase of 275% in copies sold this week? Because it's actually more about media buzz but when KISS fans learn about this comic book, they tend to grab it. Yeah, it was announced this week that Gene Simmons has partnered up with film producer Gary Hamilton to form Simmons Hamilton Productions, a uh, movie production company that's already working on a movie right now. 25 films are slated over the next five years. That's a pretty big slate that is not guaranteed. And the current movies that are being lined up all seem to be like creature films. The first one being about a shark attack, you know, being stranded in the water type of vibes. Also keep in mind, if you're looking for some dope kiss comic books to collect, they first appeared in cameo in Howard the Duck number 12 and made their first full appearance in issue number 13. Those are very affordable. And you can find out all the collectible KISS comic books by downloading the best comic app in existence. It's called Key Collector Comics. It's available for both Androids and iPhones. If you use code TOM101, you unlock a free two-week subscription of the app. You get access to all the categories, including things like future keys. So you can kind of like map out what comic books that you may be missing out on that you may want to buy just for potential key worthiness alone. Moving on to number nine. We'll move right past that. Tales to Astonish, issue number 46. This is the first appearance of Craglin. $415 average sales, a recent February sale for a CGC 9.0 hit $960. This is a character who's barely been in the comics. In fact, his modern renditions, he's been killed off since and has had more screen time live, courtesy of Sean Gunn, James Gunn's brother, Guardians of the Galaxy, than anything that's happened in the pages of the books. Yeah, he first appeared in this issue of Tales to Astonish and was defeated in the same issue by Ant-Man and the Wasp. And James Gunn must have been a big fan of this issue because he pulled the name Craglin out, gave it to his brother, and basically reinvented, redefined the character. And then when they reintroduced Craglin in all new Guardians of the Galaxy annual number one back in 2017, it was clearly based off of the movie version. Receiving Yondu's arrow at the end of Guardians 2, being a prominent member of the Guardians all throughout the third film, and part of the new team led by Rocket Raccoon at the end. That's why we're seeing an increase of copies sold of 233%. It's also just a super scarce book all around. There's only 170 CGC slabbed copies in existence. 
The highest grade we've seen sell since 2019 is a 9.0 earlier this year, back in February, for $960. There hasn't been a, uh, the highest graded copy is a 9.6. That hasn't sold since February 2018, when the uh, second movie was ramping up and coming out later that year. It's also the fourth appearance of The Wasp. Now looking at number eight on the list, we have Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., issue number one. This debuted in 1968, Jim Steranko Brilliance, taking a nearly canceled title and doing so well that it got him his own ongoing series with Nick Fury. It starts here, and the art is exquisite. We're seeing a 133% increase in copies sold of this book compared to weeks past. We're seeing a $370 average sale right now, and the most recent high-grade sale was $896 in February for a 9.6. Samuel Jackson finally leading one of the miniseries on Disney Plus, long overdue, and it seems like it's going to be like a serious political thriller. Yeah, I'm excited. Definitely my favorite crossover comic in the Marvel comics. I don't think they're going to go true accurate to the plot of that comic. It's very big and epic, featuring basically every superhero in the entire Marvel Universe. The MCU version of Secret Invasion definitely seems to be a lot more small scale and focused. You've got Nick Fury finally leading a project here. He's always been kind of like an Avengers advisor or maybe Captain Marvel's best friend in that movie. That's the biggest role he's had up until now. You got Nick Fury. You got Don Cheadle as War Machine. You've got Talos the Scroll. You've got Amelia Clark doing whatever she does now, Khaleesi stuff. I'm not even sure which. I think she's a scroll. I'm not sure. I think probably everybody's going to be a scroll in this show. It's going to be exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. It looks like just what the MCU needs after some more lighthearted stuff in recent years that hasn't always popped off with the fan base. An increase of copies sold of 133% as we draw near the June 21st release date. And there's a new comic book coming out. Yeah, Fury's getting a one-shot. It's a big one-shot written by Al Ewing, who did Immortal Hulk, who's about to start writing Immortal Thor, which I'm super excited for. That sounds crazy. But yeah, this one-shot's going to deal with a uh, half- Story about the current Nick Fury based on the Samuel L. Jackson version, Nick Fury Jr., who is the son of the original uh, Jim Steranko era Nick Fury, who we're going to get a story of and a flashback to. And there's even some pretty cool art in here for you Steranko kids. You see that like tribute, clear tribute they're doing on that first page. Yeah, it's cool. I need to I need to go grab this book. Number seven on the list is very intriguing because we were talking about the first cameo appearance of Mr. Sinister. Well, are we talking about 221, the first appearance in full? Nope. We're talking about his second appearance and first cover appearance in, number seven on the list, Uncanny X-Men 239. This came out in 1988. Before I forget, let's get into some numbers. We're seeing $35 average sales for this book. There was a recent $208 CGC 9.8 sale in April. There's only 827 slabs on the CGC census total, so it's a relatively low, low census count, especially compared to some other books on the list that we're going to be getting into here in a little bit. Stay tuned for that. And there's also a 171% increase in copies sold of this book compared to last week. I think this book is spiking the same reason why issue 213, his cameo appearance, was spiking last week. The ties to Mr. Sinister and High Evolutionary, coupled with the fact that we're going to be seeing him introduced to a larger audience, courtesy of the X-Men 97 show coming soon. Yeah, High Evolutionary being featured as the villain in Guardians 3 is definitely driving all of these books and the uh, Mr. Sinister appearance in general. But yeah, in this issue, he's definitely on the cover, which makes it a little more attractive if you are specifically looking for Mr. Sinister. And yeah, he will be the villain of the upcoming X-Men 97 animated series. I took a look at the cast list to see if maybe there were other villains on the dock for other episodes. You've got Magneto is the only other one I saw, but we've already established that he will be taking over and leading the X-Men now that Charles Xavier is up in space for some reason. This is very intriguing because 213 is hitting right around 160 for a 9.8. This comic book on the list is selling for more, I suspect because it is a key appearance and he's prominently on the cover, but there are far less books added to the census at this point. Yeah, if you take a look at the total number of slabs on the census for each issue, this one here, issue 239, has 827 copies. Issue 213, we have 3,135. That's basically a four times increase. Holy CGC comic fam. At the list at number six, we have Spider-Man number seven. This came out a month ago. And we're going to get to the Ramos variant, but let's talk about the cover A first. We have $15 average sales and an $82 recent CGC 9.8 sale to report. That is the lower end, the higher end that this book hit was the same month because it just came out for $125. So if you're specking on the book and don't want to be patient, you're definitely going to be looking at paying $30 to $50 above market right now. 
Yeah, and we, we definitely are seeing an increase in copies sold, 208% to be exact, because the second print of this issue just came out this past week, and it's driving up Spider-Boy hype yet again. Just when we stopped talking about this character, they pulled us back in. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Lots of store variants, lots of interest and intrigue, especially because of Edge of Spider-Verse issue number three. Yeah, there's been uh, full page ads for Edge of Spider-Verse 3 in like Marvel Comics for the past week or two. I took a picture of one last night actually and threw it in this script here as we were uh, as I was reading my books. And even in the bottom of that ad, it says also featuring Spider-Boy's first solo story. So it's very clear they're uh, they know Spider-Boy is popular and they're putting him on the ad. And now let's get to that Ramos variant because that's the one that members are speculating on because he's on the cover. Well, we just told you about the 9.8 sale of cover A. There are a total of 154 9.8s on the census. And when we look at all the tracking that we do, an increase of 154 fresh slabs in under 30 days, that's a lot. But then you look at the Ramos variant, a total of 9.8s count to 1,746 copies. Hot freaking damn. And that's really all the information we have to go off of in this book, because last time we talked about it, it was brand new that week, and the CGC is not that fast, but they are uh, shockingly fast with this book. Almost 1,800 slabs in a month. It's kind of bonkers. It's higher than a lot of other books that we're talking about on this list that have been out for decades, some of them. Now, keep in mind, CGC updates the census count as they grade the comics. There's a good chunk of these books that I suspect are on their way back or possibly still being prepped for shipment, I think the supply is about to go up. And by the time it does, there's probably going to be more than 2,000 of these graded at 9.8 on the census. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we uh, we saw the record high for the Ramos variant hit 160 last month. And earlier this month, it's down to 110 already. So I think we're already starting to see that, uh, that downward trend. And it's only going to go even lower once these slabs get back to their rightful owners. I want to know your thoughts about Spider-Boy, and I also want to know your thoughts about the ongoing Amazing Spider-Man run, because I'm not hearing a whole lot of good things about that, and all I'm hearing about is Dan Slott, who they took off of Spider-Man, and now is all the rage. Yeah, Dan Slott left Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, the flagship title at Marvel Comics five years ago, and then was replaced with Nick Spencer and current writer Zeb Wells, both of whom have not had the most popular runs, We've actually just heard news, spoiler news, about the death of Miss Marvel coming up in a recent, in an upcoming issue of Amazing Spider-Man, and that's not really going over the well, the way that Marvel really wanted it to, I don't think, at least in advance. It's just, we're hearing so much more buzz about this offshoot Spider-Man spinoff series and not a lot about Amazing Spider-Man, which should definitely be reversed, in my opinion. I have a lot of, like, Spidey stuff to talk about. Can I just, like, hit him with it all right now? Hit me! Okay, Go to my website, comictom101.com. Our giveaways are now being done via our newsletter. It's the only way we can ensure our members don't get scammed in the comment section. If you ever get a comment saying you want something from us, it's not going to be in the comment section. You have to just sign up to our newsletter. I won't spam you. And this month, at the end of May, I'm giving away this amazing Spider-Man 41 graded at a 5.0. First appearance of the Rhino. In other Spider-Man related news, we have a uh, Spider-Gwen Shadow Clones number one variant coming out in this month's Mystery Mail Call in the June Mystery Mail Call done by Ariel Diaz. That's one per box as well as a Maleficent cover by Johnny Desjardins. We have two different versions of that going out as well. You can go to the same website. While you're there signing up to the newsletter, you can join the community and give me an excuse to send you some comics every month. And I'm not done, Ryan, because this week I gave this book away. By the time you're watching it, it's too late. But you should have already known because we've been telling you about it all month. Every month, I'm bringing these like monster keys to whatnot, and I'm just giving stuff away. And someone got this newsstand, fresh first appearance of Venom in high grade. And all you have to do is join the app. What's up? What's that? More Spider-Man stuff? Ooh, number five on the list is Venom, Lethal Protector number two. Yo, don't spec on this book. It's so silly. <laughs> <laughs> Tom doesn't say that very often, but I think I have to agree with him. Uh, skip this one. It doesn't really, it's, it's a very, very thin connection to the reason people are buying it. You buy this book because you love Venom, Lethal Protector, because it's when Eddie Brock goes full anti-hero. He travels all the way to San Francisco to deal with the homeless problem that's uh, happening underground. It sounds like he's murdering a bunch of homeless people. No, no, no. He's protecting them, dude. He's like going underground and helping them because there's he's like Deal society. with the homeless problem. Yeah, no, but he goes to like uh, San Francisco and causes a ruckus. And there's a team of various military personnel that are all like managed by a general who we may be seeing soon. That's as uh, firm of a connection as we're getting here. Basically, the shooting title for Venom 3 has been announced as Orwell, 
which is the first name of this general Tom just mentioned, General Orwell Taylor. Makes his who, first appearance in this book. Who first appears in this issue, puts together the jury, which is a group of, you know, mecked out army bros who try to capture Venom. That's it. That's the reason Yo, this book is here. If they couldn't do it with Carnage, why would people think they can do it with this like Avatar type of narrative they're after right now? An increase of copies sold of 200%. The heights this book reached was 282 back in 2021 when Venom spec was like off the chain. Well, now 9.8s are hitting $85, and that's probably high. Why are they saying Venom 3 is called Orwell to begin with? What is what is a shooting title, Tom? What does that mean? Well, when the shooting starts, they got to do it at a location. And if they were to broadcast, hey, we're filming Venom 2 here, Tom Hardy's going to be around, all the fans come. So they have to give it like a secret name, a code name, if you will. Yeah, if you put up a sign that says, hey, we're shooting this movie Orwell, please go away so we can film this. You know, no one's going to really cram around and try and, oh, it's Orwell, I'm excited. But if you put up a sign that says, hey, Venom, yeah, Tom Hardy, might not be a good idea. So, yeah, it's a code name to disguise the fact that they're shooting a different movie. So is it confirmed spec? Absolutely not. But that is pretty on the nose. Yeah, it could be Orwell from this book. It could be George Orwell from 1984. It could be some other guy named Orwell. It could just be a random name they pulled out of nowhere. Yo, didn't they nickname the production of Daredevil, wasn't it, like, Kitchen? Uh, Yeah, Daredevil Born Again, the current shooting title for Daredevil Born Again is Out the Kitchen. Out the Kitchen because of Hell's Kitchen. Hey, see, it's kind of on the nose it's, as well. They, they sometimes put clues in there, so that's why people are, are making a big reach, in my opinion, and going to Venom Lethal Protector number two. Just get it if you want to read Venom Lethal Protector. Which you should. It's awesome. We've also made videos on it, and now looking at the list at number four, more things that are not surprising whatsoever. We have Star Wars Thrawn number one. This came out in 2018. It's the first origin solo series featuring Thrawn, and It's pretty clear. This is the next big bad. It's happening. Rumors were circulating before that that was going to be the case. And now we're hearing that the movie that Dave Filoni is going to be piloting is going to be titled Heir to the Empire. So last month at Star Wars Celebration, we got confirmation that they were working on three upcoming Star Wars films, one of which will be directed by Dave Filoni and will be a conclusion to all of these storylines that are happening right now in uh, Mandalorian and Ahsoka. Uh, Basically, this whole time period just after Return of the Jedi, we'll all get tied up in this movie, which the rumors are saying it will be called Heir to the Empire, which is the name of the novel where Thrawn first appeared. An increase of copies sold of 308%, and this is a tough book in high grade. I've owned it many times. This is at a time where Marvel's paper wasn't that great. It's still not that great, but the total 9.8 census count is 283 Three more since we chatted about this last just in April when this book made the trending list. The highs that this book reached was 350 back when the specs started happening in 2021. I'm more surprised that we're seeing this book, the first Thrawn origin story, versus his first appearance in Heir to the Empire, which we've been talking about a lot recently. This one is a little bit different, but either way, it's exciting. I want to see Thrawn, period. That's it. And real talk, Ryan, what the hell is going on with G.I. Joe and Transformers? At the list at number three, G.I. Joe and the Transformers number one. This was a team-up issue debuting in 1987, the first crossover between both Hasbro titles. Yeah, it's a book like this that really makes me wish Russ was here because G.I. Joe and the original Transformers are beyond me. It's a little too old for me. I don't. I didn't watch either of those. I was not born in the 80s or watching cartoons in the 80s. Not my thing, so... We're talking about Beast Wars, however, which is the 90s uh, CGI Transformers cartoon, which was my jam. The uh, upcoming Transformers Rise of the Beasts movie will incorporate a lot of those characters, so I am excited for that. We have talked about that recently as well on the show, but now we're getting rumors again of a crossover happening in the movie world between G.I. Joe and Transformers. $3 average sales, a 9.8 hit $109. Back in 2022, the heights this book reached was 425 because there were rumors circulating over a year ago that there was going to be some type of crossover event to hit the screen. But here's the thing. G.I. Joe has not performed well on the screen. The last movie was Snake Eyes, and it was critically panned. So I'm over here trying to figure out why this huge increase. And I typed it in on Google. And the only news I found was the old option status news, which we have no updates on. And also Beast Wars is like departing from the main franchise and trying to like do a mulligan to try to bring the fandom back up as it once was with the early films that I think Michael Bay kind of lost. Yeah, I I looked this up too. And they said they did say we're already working on multiple Transformers movies. And in my mind, I read that as, we're going to build up the Beast Wars universe 
because they only are introducing like three or four of the Beast Wars characters in this upcoming movie. They aren't even introducing any of the villains from that cartoon. So there is plenty of room to uh, grow and expand the Beast Wars side of the Transformers mythology. And I think when you're talking about upcoming Transformers movies, that direction makes a lot more sense to uh, speculate on versus some kind of G.I. Joe crossover that has been in development hell for over a decade now. And now we're at number two on the list with, oh my gosh, why is this book on the list? They better not be doing Serpent Society. We have the first appearance of the snake-filled villain team, Captain America 310. So not excited about this book, dude. Are they going to like try to sabotage our new Captain America? Because, yo, I like Anthony Mackie, Captain America. Yeah, there's a couple reasons we're talking about this book today, uh, both of which are because we got some sneaky set photos taken when they were filming this movie recently on the streets. And I don't know how I feel about this, man. One of them is the wrestler Seth Rollins, who's dressed up in costume filming something outside. He's in green, and I think that's actually why people are thinking he's part of the Serpent Society. Is that actually what's happening? Well, there's a big team of snake villains in this issue that fight Captain America, and it sounds really cheesy. It's a little too old. I have not read any of this era of Captain America. Right, Ryan, I need you to read every single member of the Serpent Society. Oh. We have to do it. We've all had to do it on the show at least once, damn it. You're just trying to make me laugh. Okay. I'll help you. The first one is freaking Cottonmouth. You who's take the, the coolest one. You take the cool one, yeah, that we Damn already right. got from the Luke Cage Netflix show. Mahershala Ali played Cottonmouth on Luke Cage. And he, was, his, he was really cool. Remember his Biggie Smalls artwork in his office? How cool was that? That show was really good. All right, we got Bushmaster, Diamondback, Asp, Rattler, Death Adder, Princess Python, Black Mamba, Cobra, Anaconda, Constrictor, and Sidewinder. And how are all these snake guys separately running around the Marvel Universe doing snake crimes and joining up to make a snake team, which I think is probably a cooler name than Serpent Society. <laughs> Just This is the first appearance of the snake team, an increase uh. in copies sold of 667% because people think that this is going to be the type of team up that's going to happen in the next Captain America film. You know, this is sabotage. It's straight up sandwich happening. We talked about this back in January, and this is not the first time Spec has swirled around this book. This made the trending list back in January, but since then, we've only seen an increase of six CGC slabs added to that census, bringing the total up to 107 since January. Meanwhile, in the last 30 days, we've got almost 2,000 slabs of the first Spider Boy, so I don't know what's happening. I don't think people really believe in this book, man. I mean, there's only 15 copies graded at a 9.8 we haven't seen one sell since 2019. You have to assume some people are trying to get high-grade copies of it, but it's not that new. 1985, there should be a plethora of them out there. You may be able to get one done yourself. But yeah, back to Seth Rollins. He was just standing around, filming a scene outside. Looking like Jason Momoa, dude. He looks a little like Jason Momoa, and there you couldn't hear anything they were saying. This, this footage was captured from, it looks like, across the streets. He was hissing, dude. He was definitely hissing. He had a giant snake outfit on, so maybe. <laughs> no, just kidding. That didn't happen. But the other bit of news we got also from uh, rec recording on the street was Anthony Mackie dressed up in what looks like a brand new Captain America suit already, even though he just ended Falcon and the Winter Soldier debuting that glamorous, beautiful, sexy Falcon Captain America costume that he rocked in the end of that show. Yeah, why'd they change it? Yo, I like that costume. And we never really got to see it in action. We got one scene of it at the end of the show, and then that was it. And apparently he's already changing costumes again. Captain America himself, Chris Evans, changed costumes in between every movie, but I feel like this is too soon. We didn't get enough time with that costume. Slap that like button and hit the subscribe order crash down. It's in previews now. And join me while we chat about number one on the list, the most popular book in the world. And dare I say, this Frank Miller Wolverine key. That's amazing that everybody needs to own a copy of. This is Wolverine's first solo series, issue number one. A classic cover, I think, is on the list. Not because of Deadpool spec, but because people are finally realizing that they may not actually like Frank Miller art. Yeah, I'll come out and say it. Uh, I don't like Frank Miller art. I'm a fan of Sin City. I think he did really cool art in that book. I like the stark black and white coloring in there. But uh, The Dark Knight Returns, I, I don't like it. I think there's a, a few too many sh images that are just a little, make me queasy. They make me a little uncomfortable to look at. I'm not a fan of the art. But we'll get into more Frank Miller stuff as we go on. We've seen $150 average sales for this book, with a recent CGC 9.8 hitting $552 
earlier this month. We have an increase of 182% in copies sold. Shout out Hulk 182. And we have a record high that was reached back in 2021 of $1,365. This book has dropped so much. And also keep in mind, Frank Miller had a signing at CGC over the last month. Since we chatted about this last, which was back in March because of Deadpool, there's been an increase of 454 copies of this book alone added to the CGC census. Which is a lot. That is a pretty big increase, and normally that's higher than any other book we talk about on the list. It ain't no Spider-Boy. But Spider-Boy, man, that's got like almost four times, it was over four times more than this added to the census in the last month. So I don't know what's going on in the world, but here we are. So what do you think about that comparison? And also, of course, what do you think about the Wolverine artwork that became the subject of every conversation on the internet. I thought we may have enough time to talk about it on the podcast because I didn't think it was that big of a deal because, you know, Frank Miller puts out some very unique stuff that is an acquired taste at best. Yeah, the the schedule that we make the podcast on, by the time we record it next week, I think this, this cover is already going to be a little bit too old news for our podcast. But I did see some comparisons to Mike Mignola artwork, actually, with this uh, Wolverine cover here. It's not entirely wrong. I feel like there's a lot of... Uh, Similar colors that he uses. How dare you, Ryan, the king of negative space. But for real, though, I've had Mike Mignola sign a whole lot of X-Factor and Alpha Flight covers, and he always goes out of his way to mention how much he disliked his style back then. Granted, Frank Miller is doing, like, digital artwork now, so it's a little different, but here's the only thing that needs to be said. The dude wrote Dark Knight Returns. He wrote Year One. There is nothing that needs to be said other than that. Yeah, as a writer, I think Frank Miller is a well-deserved legend. Uh, you can also throw on Daredevil on top of that. His oh, work yeah. on Daredevil and Born, Born Again, all the Kingpin, Electra stuff he did. Uh, he wrote 300, which is also really cool, even though I don't like that movie. I think the comic's really badass. Frank Miller's pretty cool. I want to know the community's thoughts about their favorite Frank Miller artwork in the comments section below. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Join me every single week on Whatnot, the best new place to buy and sell collectibles. Yesterday, I gave away this ASM 300 newsstand. It was a gorgeous copy and someone got it for free. Don't miss out on these types of drops. I've given away multiple ASM 300s, Werewolf by Night 32, House of Secrets 92, and I have something planned for the end of June. I want you there. So click the link in the description, support the show, and join us on Whatnot. We have other videos for you to check out. Enjoy those and have a great weekend. I gotta go to a wedding, family stuff. Should be some good food. Peace.